aim with making this video is to show techniques which are useful in creating portraits and are especially helpful for a learner. When not teaching, I would not necessarily use all of the techniques to the extent I do here. I'm speaking to those who want a verbatim account of how to draw a portrait. There isn't one. Only useful techniques. I will draw this portrait solidly, thoroughly, through to the end. It will therefore be a bit overworked and lack some of the freshness that I would prefer in a portrait of Cat. But she knows what she's getting into. If you see points at which you think the drawing could be finished, note them. Pay attention to what you like and don't like to learn your preferences. Having said that, if you sense resistance in yourself to learn a particular technique that might resolve a recurring problem in your drawings, be honest with yourself and give it a go. Don't get caught up on one particular feature. All the features are connected and your drawing needs to reflect that. Move from one area to another and back again, gradually increasing the definition. The best state to be in is a kind of open-minded concentration that allows you to note and resolve rather than fixate on trouble spots. And what you're not seeing in this video are the breaks. Breaks help you to return to your drawing with fresh eyes. Constructive self-critiquing is a necessary skill to cultivate in the development of your drawing practice. Other useful techniques are to look at your work from a distance or in a mirror. It's amazing what you'll notice when you see your drawing reversed. I refine the areas that will be most defined in the finished drawing. Pay close attention to tonal variation, the placement of core shadows, reflected light, mid-tones, etc. To guess or generalise where shadows occur at this stage will diminish your drawing.
Pay particular attention to how hair grows from partings, where marks that start abruptly at the scalp can be effective. And hairlines, where wispy directional marks are more useful. As well as making your marks reflect directional flow, remember that hair is also a three-dimensional mass that has under and outer sides. I have used my blending stump more lightly than I usually do in this drawing. I was going for clarity of mark, but I'm not sure it was the right decision. Using a thick graphite stump is a great way of shading large areas. It also creates a differentiating mark to the more highly finished parts of your drawing. Note that the greatest tonal range is reserved for the central focal area. This is because our eye is drawn to areas of greatest tonal range. Let's take a closer look. The chalk pastel is used both to blend with the graphite and make softer marks and to provide highlights, which I then work back into with my sharpened 4B graphite pencil to create the finest detailing. I am not ecstatic with this drawing. In it, Cat looks matronly, for which she's not, but through drawing it I've become exquisitely familiar with her features, and I know that my next drawing will be better because of it. And that's my final point. Whilst drawing is about doing the best you can, there is always something new to learn. 
So it can't be about perfection. It's all about the process.